buying ads in a magazine, spending lots of big bucks on a fancy, expensive website, um, certainly doing direct mail. I mean, all these things cost a lot of money, which a small business owner may not have a lot of. So content marketing is far less expensive and it's effective. I mean, you know, we've got lots of stats, things like content marketing can generate over three times as many leads as outbound marketing and typically costs 62% less. That's according to the Content Marketing Institute. So it's far less expensive and it's effective. It works. You're listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with your host, Michael Palmer. Listen each week as inspiring guests share their secrets of success to help you increase your confidence, work smarter, and build a business you love. This episode of The Successful Bookkeeper is brought to you by purebookkeeping.com, the proven system to grow your bookkeeping business. Welcome back to the Successful Bookkeeper Podcast. I am your host, Michael Palmer, and today's show is going to be a great one. Our guest is one of Canada's top startup experts who has launched 14 businesses, co-authored a book, and trained thousands of entrepreneurs. He runs a content marketing agency, Pierce Content Marketing, which creates small business advice content for big brands including Scotiabank, Sage, MasterCard, and Rogers. Today, our conversation will focus on his company, boxofbusinessblogs.com, which is used by bookkeepers and accountants to make their content marketing easier and more relevant. Roger Pierce, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Michael. Nice to be here. It's great to have you. You know, and we've known each other actually for a very long time and have some interwoven connectedness uh, with one of our past guest, Mark Bowden, which is how we came to having a conversation to have you on the podcast, which I'm so excited about because I think what you have to share is going to be very valuable to our listeners. I hope we can offer some insights and some helpful tips in terms of content marketing for sure. Yes, absolutely. Now, Roger, before we get into all of those wonderful ideas, thoughts, and actions that our listeners can take, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career leading up to this point. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity. Up until now, I have been a lifelong entrepreneur. I've owned 14 small businesses, so I've never really had an honest job, Michael. I started my first business right out of school. A number of businesses, marketing and advertising. I owned a trade show company. I owned a billboard company. What else do we have? A media buying service and a couple of others in there. But around the year 2000, I got really involved with uh, government contracts through one of my companies, a marketing agency at the time. And the government office asked us to put together a program to help uh, young entrepreneurs or help people learn more about entrepreneurship, how to start a business, what's involved, what are the costs, that kind of thing. And um, we put together this great little program called Exploring Entrepreneurship. And basically involved going around to high schools, colleges, and universities. We hired a bunch of speakers and trainers, set them up with laptops and projectors, I think slides back then. And we gave presentations on what it's like to run a business and how to get started. Basically, and there was a website, too, that backed up the whole thing. So a young person in graduating from high school or graduating from college or university could go out and find information about, hey, what's this career path called entrepreneurship? Because at the time, there was a void. There was a lot of industry professionals out there talking about careers in nursing or trades or engineering or becoming a doctor or a lawyer. Those groups were well represented, but there wasn't anyone speaking too much about entrepreneurship. So that led to a series of companies. I co-founded a company in 2003 called BizLaunch, which I sold to my partner back in 2011. BizLaunch was a small business training company. I think you and I met sometime around that, that period too, Michael. And we provided small business training and seminars and webinars for small business owners. So it included a 30-hour course someone could take if they wanted to start a business. We also offered 90-minute seminars and webinars on specific small business topics. Towards the end of that time at BizLaunch, we got into content marketing. 
um, some of our sponsors of the training programs like Visa and Bell said, hey, could you guys do some articles for our website? We'd love to share your expertise with our audience. And we said, of course. <laughs> and we took their money and we made articles and things for corporate websites. And that kind of got me into the whole content marketing of small business topics. So today, Pierce Content Marketing and my other company, Box of Business Blogs, that's all we do. Pierce Content Marketing focuses on content uh, items, which I'll explain what those are in a minute, for big brands, like you mentioned, banks, uh, Sage, FedEx, MasterCard, we've worked with Staples, et cetera, in the past. And Box of Business Blogs is more of a service for the actual small business owner, primarily bookkeepers and accountants, where they can go in and subscribe for a very few dollars a month and get um, articles that they can post in their social media channels. So it really takes all that worry away from, you know, where am I going to find the next topic? Because every week you'll be sent a fresh article that you can use in your social media, on your blog or your newsletter. So that's a roundabout story, Michael, to sort of explain how I got to where I am today. I am a small business expert. I firmly believe everyone should start a small business. I do my best to support small business owners out there through through my work. But really, our, our company now is all about bridging that gap between big corporations and small business owners. And, and um, big companies are very interested in content marketing because they see it as a, a cost-effective way and a thought leadership path to engage small business owners. And we want to help small business owners succeed through content. And we do that through our content. We love to put uh, advice and information into our different materials that, that the brands can then run with and post. So in a way, we're reaching a much larger, larger audience by working with companies that have big platforms than I could working uh, directly with small business owners for my own platforms. So it works out pretty well. Wow. I just love your, your backstory and the, the, the rich, deep experience, learning. You've been there, you've done it, and evolved to now being able to do what you're doing today. And we love anyone that supports small business. So I know our listeners are loving the fact that we are having this conversation because they are, they are you and they're also people that can really, I think, benefit from learning from you. And, and as well, you've, you've worked a lot with organizations that are in the bookkeeping and accounting space. You're, you're currently doing a lot of work with Sage. Is that correct? That's correct. Sage has been a client now for, I'm going to say, three years. And our work with Sage includes content to help them uh, market products such as Sage 50, to small business owners, but also we're working with Sage Accountant Solutions and the Sage Accountants Network across North America and developing content and programs to help them help their clients, which are bookkeepers and accountants. So one of those examples, Michael, is uh, for about a year and a half now, we're running a webinar program called Sage Marketing Webinars for Accountant, Accounting Professionals. And these webinars are free. Sage broadcasts them out to their database. And bookkeepers and accountants can join the webinars and learn topics like how to use social media to grow your practice, how to make your practice stand out in the marketplace, how to uh, do most of the marketing things you need to do. We also have one on improving your sales techniques. One of my favorite topics recently was finding your ideal client. And it talks about, you know, what, how do you profile a client? Let's take a look at what your ideal clients are now. Let's make a profile of that client or persona and let's figure out a plan to engage more people just like them. Because as you, as you know, most bookkeepers have a preferred type of customer they would like more of. Someone who pays the bills on time, is cooperative, is someone organized, etc. So those are the types of topics that we're doing in this webinar program with Sage. And you know, Sage is doing what it can to get out there and reach small business owners and bookkeepers and accountants. And we think content marketing is the, the best way we can support them. Awesome. And that we will have definitely links to, to for our listeners. I'm sure there's many listeners going, where do I find that? How do I get more information? So the link will definitely be in the show notes. Uh, and I and I love, you know, you're, you're helping an organization 
stimulate really the usage uh, in small business of their products so that bookkeepers that work with Sage 50 can actually have customers to go and work with. So you're, you're, you're helping all in many of our listeners right now, you, you know, it's one of those things that most people would probably not even be aware of, but there's many people that are in the ecosystem of business and how business gets fulfilled and marketing and how it gets sold. So interesting from that perspective, but let's get into content marketing. So many of our bookkeepers may not even know what content marketing really is. So what is it? Good question. Great place to start. There's lots of different definitions. You know, to me, the simplest one, it's about demonstrating your expertise, sharing information, providing helpful tips and advice, and, you know, not being salesy, not not focusing on the pitch just yet. So, for example, a blog is a form of, of content, an infographic, you know, a visual illustration of a topic. Uh, certainly short videos. You can pick up your iPhone and, or whatever and take a quick video of yourself and offer a tip. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, ebooks are very popular. I'm sure most of your listeners have at one point downloaded a free flashy ebook in exchange for their email address. That's a form of content. And thought leadership articles, which are longer pieces on more weighty topics. Now, the trick about content marketing is you, you don't want to be too salesy, like I mentioned earlier. This is different from advertising. This is a form of marketing. Advertising is when you pay for an ad in a radio station or a newspaper or a magazine, or TV, or even online, and it's pretty blatant. Buy from us, buy from us, buy from us. Content marketing seeks to add value to the prospect first, seeks to differentiate your brand through some thought leadership, uh, seeks to share expertise. In other words, you're giving before you get the sale. You're giving before you get the sale. And I really believe in that philosophy. You know, consumers and business owners out there are inundated with pitches left, right, and center. <clears throat> Excuse me, how many times does your email box fill up with pitches, Michael, on a, on a daily basis? Um, yeah. You know, we get tons of the spam stuff and, and, and we're inundated. So anything that helps a seller, like a bookkeeper, stand out by providing some thought leadership, by giving something first, um, is going to separate them up. So a, a bookkeeper can do a number of things, and we'll, we'll give some concrete tips in a minute, but really content marketing should be part of an overall marketing strategy. I never say do one thing only, focus entirely on content. But for example, you might decide that you know half of your efforts are going to be on content marketing, maybe 30% are going to be on paid advertising online, like pay-per-click ads or, or Facebook ads. And maybe another 20% is going to be through referral marketing or networking. So really, content marketing should be considered as part of an overall mix. Yeah, and those percentages would definitely be up for discussion depending on what market you're in, what stage of business you're in, and all sorts of thoughts and ideas. But content marketing should be definitely one of those things that I believe everyone should be thinking about. And so really the point is attracting clients. How do you think content marketing helps a bookkeeper attract clients? You've mentioned a little bit of, about that, but is there, have you seen specific examples of where bookkeepers and accountants have been using it that that's, they've said, wow, look, look at this. This is just attracting clients for us. Mm. You know, I can inundate you with lots of stats about the effectiveness of content marketing, but I won't do that. You raised a couple of good points. First of all, that I'll address is, you know, why, okay, now that I understand what is content marketing, now let's talk about why? Why should I bother? Um, content marketing is way less expensive than traditional forms of, of marketing and advertising. So, you that's know, a big writing, one. that's a big one. Writing an article and sharing it through Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, doing a, an image on, on Instagram, doing a quick little YouTube video or something. Those things are, are, are mostly far less expensive than, say, buying ads in a magazine, which most small business owners can't afford. Spending lots of big bucks on a fancy, expensive website, um, certainly doing direct mail. I mean, all these things cost a lot of money, which a small business owner may not have a lot of. So content marketing is far less expensive, and it's effective. I mean, you know, we've got lots of stats, things like content marketing can generate over three times as many leads as outbound marketing, and typically costs 62% less. That's according to the Content Marketing Institute. So it's far less expensive. 
and it's effective. It works. I'll give you an example in terms of a bookkeeper. So let's say a bookkeeper offers some tips through their blog. Um, perhaps the article is about, you know, three easy ways to organize your, your documents for tax time. So that's a good kind of piece for a bookkeeper. It's relevant to what they do. It's offering some advice. It's sharing some thought leadership. Uh, and, you know, it helps the business owner who's going to read that save time and maybe save some money. Those are things entrepreneurs are looking for online. Entrepreneurs, by the way, want to, they search for topics online about marketing and sales, how to make money. They search for topics uh, online, how to save, save time and save money and how to be more efficient. So three easy ways to organize your life uh, for tax time. And you offer those three tips. And maybe you talk a little bit about using software or using an app like Receipt Bank or how to organize physical receipts, doing it well in advance, whatever the tip might include. You post that article, post that blog on your website, and it's easy to put something up. Most website services these days have a built-in blog publishing platform, or you can use something like WordPress. That attaches pretty easily to most things. And uh, then you start to share it to your Facebook channel, your, your LinkedIn channel, your Twitter feed, and uh, any other channels you might, you might have as well. And what happens is, you know, someone will read that article and go, oh, this is a useful tip, and then they'll share it out to their network. So that's one thing that traditional advertising can't do. It's very unlikely someone's going to cut out the ad from a magazine that you paid $5,000 for and share it with all their friends, right? But social media, because it's digital, makes it so easy. You just click, click, click. Before you know it, you've amplified your reach. And I think that's very attractive and very powerful for, for small business owners, especially bookkeepers, because we're all looking for cost-effective ways to get the word out about our good work. Yeah, beautiful. And it, and it is getting the word out, but there's, as well, as you've mentioned, it's also being valuable to people, which puts you on the right footing for doing business with somebody. They, they get to, they're getting to know you and they're getting value from you before they maybe even have met you or interacted with you. They're already, uh, the bank of values already been, a couple of uh, dollars have been dropped in that bank. And so the, anybody who comes at you from a content marketing place is going to be in a better place than many other forms, pay-per-click, um, you know, advertising, uh, even a referral, right? Uh, so I think that, that part of it is really exciting. Now, many bookkeeping business owners, they don't have a lot of time. And, and maybe even the writing, because I know enough to know about content marketing that not all writing is going to be valuable. It, takes, it d does take a little bit of talent to create this type of content. And then there's, you got to implement it. You got to get it out into the world. How can they overcome some of these barriers? What you're talking about there is what's going to be my content marketing strategy and how do I, I, I find enough time in my day to stick to it, and, and you've raised some good points. So just some basic basic advice to begin with. Number one, making a commitment to content marketing as part of your overall marketing strategy. That's key. So let's say you decide you're going to do an article a week, okay? Um, you're going to allow an, an hour, perhaps, a week to write that article, or if you want to use a service like ours, selfless plug here for boxofbusinessblogs.com, but We'll send you the article ready to post. And by the way, a good article, Michael, should be, I'd say, three to 500 words. This shouldn't be an essay. It should be uh, short and sweet, to the point, lots of white space, lots of bullets. Small business owners love to read, you know, quick points, so top three lists or four or five points or, you know, five ways to set aside money for taxes or three ways to speed up your receivables, those types of things are what entrepreneurs will, will respond to. So you write up the piece, and when it's all done, you edit it a bit. You want to pay careful, close attention to the headline, because think of your own online behavior. We surf through the web, and we click on headlines that are catchy. It's the old newspaper trick. If the headline doesn't work, the rest of it is kind of moot. So spend some time on the headline. You can actually look at some sites on the web that will give you tips and advice on how to improve or make your headline more juicy. 
it is important to be catching. But I think things like, you know, three ways to speed up your receivables is a, is a, is a great topic to, to run with. So you've got your great headline. You've got an article of maybe three to 400 words. Inside the article, by the way, at the end, it's okay to put a link to your website or your landing page or whatever you want the entrepreneur to click through next. Because after I've read that article, I want to know how to make contact. You could even just put on the bottom, this article provided courtesy of ABC Bookkeeping Services. You can reach us at. That's fair game too. The point is you don't want to make it salesy. You want to put the content first, but certainly provide a link at the bottom that will take them back because this is going to go to the end of the online universe. You want to make sure there's lots of ways for people to reach you. So you've got that article. You post it on your blog, or your website, or on your WordPress site, and then you start to share it around. You, you share it. With a click of a button on Twitter, or LinkedIn, Facebook, if you've got some images, put it on Instagram. If you're doing a, a little video, of course, that's a separate topic, but it's easy to put up on YouTube. And you share it around. And that should take you no more than an hour. If you're not a writer, you've got options. You can, like I said, pre-buy blogs from a service like ours. You can hire a freelance writer. Or, here's a trick, maybe someone in your office is a better writer than you are or has more time to write stuff than you do. So you share that out. And that's just one hour of original content. But here's the thing. You don't need to just do your own content. You can create or curate content from other sources. So I often say to people, look, if you're planning to post something every day, don't think you have to write five pieces of original content. That's a lot of work. Think about writing one original article a week, like we just described, and doing four days of curated content, meaning sharing other people's content. This accomplishes some of the same effect. It positions you as a thought leader, provide some value to your prospects, and it sure is a heck of a lot easier than creating content from scratch. So, you know, bookmark some of your favorite sites to do with taxes or business practices or things like Entrepreneur or Inc. or Fortune or any of those types of sites because there's a ton of stuff out there ready to share. And all you have to do is click on the link that shares it to Facebook and add a little note saying, hey, I found this really helpful if you're starting your business. Or, hey, here's a piece about how to sell your business. Or, hey, here's a great article about preparing for tax time. And boom, you do that, all of a sudden, you've got a, a content strategy in play. But here's where most business owners fail, Michael. It's just the frequency of it all. They get tired, they get distracted, distracted, they give up. I understand that. There's a lot of work running a small business. I've had lots of them. So consistency is key because once I start to engage with your content on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook, I'm going to expect the same thing again. If you're posting on a Tuesday, I want to see that post again on next Tuesday on, on LinkedIn. I'm actually going to look for it. That's how you build an audience. That's how you start to get people interested in your business. And that's how you engage. So you've got to allow some time and most importantly, be consistent. And I think it's, it's key again, just to keep it simple. An hour a week and maybe 15 minutes a day is all you need to do. Uh, develop your social media profile and just start to build that inbound funnel. I, 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 I would imagine, and I've had these conversations with many bookkeepers that that's the, you know the, I don't have the time, but y y you've laid out a very, I think, straightforward approach to being able to a number one budget to start doing it. But I, I will, I will also highlight that it's con it, it is really all about the consistency, and I think that could, we could probably say that around every, almost every aspect of the business, right? Is if you're going to do something, do it, do it right. Don't do everything, but do the important things, do them right and do them the same way all the time and be, be consistent with that. That leads to long-term results. This is content marketing is, is not a, Hey, I dropped a post and got business today. It's not like fishing where you throw a, a hook at a worm into the lake and, and, you know, within a few hours you're pulling out dinner. This is a, 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 a you're investing. It's more like farming, right? We're investing, planting seeds, but those, that farming, it's like an orchard versus like a corn crop, right? You're planting an orchard that's going to have multiple years of bounty coming at you if you do the work and invest that time. So I, I really love it. And I think you're making it very straightforward and simple. And I love the fact that you've you've built an organization, a company that delivers on a need for our listeners, which is they don't have a lot of time. Their core competency maybe isn't writing. So Box of Business Blogs brings fresh, relevant content that is can be very useful, which I love. Now, one thing that comes up in my mind, and I'm sure 
probably has come up in the listener's mind as we're listening, is what if somebody's already writing the, the three steps or the five steps and it's been done, it's been said before, I can imagine, and I've, I've experienced that myself when I'm coming up with content. It's like, ah, oh, well, somebody has already written this. What, what do I do now? Very good question. And here's the thing. It, it's hard to come up with absolutely original, unpublished, previously topics, right? Uh, bookkeepers and accountants will know that <laughs> painfully well. There's a lot of stuff out there on cash flow, for example. I can't tell you how many times we've written about cash flow from different angles for companies large and small. And it's a challenge to come up with, you know, uh, interesting angles. But an article on three ways to improve your cash flow, for example, that you write, you might do a better job sharing it out there than perhaps someone using the exact same title. It might be on page 10 of a Google search, which no one's going to see, right? Or it might be something that was published a couple years ago, and therefore it's not really top on the search rankings. I often recommend that you search for a title first on Google to see if anyone else is using that exact same title. And if it's a big media company like a Fortune or a Forbes or an Entrepreneur or an Inc. or Globe and Mail or whatever, then change your title. You don't want to compete with that kind of online muscle. So you come up with a different angle to it, you know. Three ways to improve your cash flow for your service-based business. Or this summer, embrace three ways to improve, improve your cash flow. You see, just come up with a slightly different variation so the topic can remain intact, but you're not going to compete head-to-head with those existing titles. I love it. I love it. And and the content probably could have a similar, you could attack it the same similar way in that the content could come from, you know, what to do when it's summer around that particular topic or find some other angle that you weave into the topic that makes it more unique towards your your readers or your you know, whoever's going to consume that content and, and for yourself. Seasonality is a great way to mix it up. I forgot to mention one key point too, and I think you you mentioned it uh, there a second ago, but profile your audience, profile your target customer. I mentioned earlier some of the work we're doing for Sage. We did this, this webinar on finding your ideal client. And that's really what it's all about for social media too. Before you begin to write anything, before you make any videos, before you create any infographics, you've really got to start with your end reader or user in mind. So who is that person or that company you're trying to attract? Are they local? Do they earn $100,000 or less? Do they earn $100,000 to $1 million? How big is their operation? Do they have five employees or 50? You know, what industry are they in? All these things are going to help you shape the content and develop the content specifically for them so it addresses their pain points and therefore increases the chances of them reading it. Next, you want to make sure you build your online audience, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, et cetera, around those target target markets. So, you know, if I'm trying to get more business in the transportation industry, say, say trucking companies, I'm going to make sure I follow um, all those people on Twitter and, and get, find out their Twitter handles and do a little bit of digging and make sure that I'm, I've got them on my social media channels and see if they can follow me back, right? It's also okay to send out your blog of catering to the trucking industry to that association or to people in that in that industry and say, hey, here's a piece I thought you might be interested in. And maybe they'll start to sign up to your social media channels as well. Yeah, those are some great, great ideas, great thoughts. And I'd really like to make sure we get the link to that webinar that was done on finding your ideal uh, ideal customer, because I, I mean, I think that's almost should be required training before anybody does anything in business. I mean, whether it's what we're talking about today, content marketing, but how you serve your clients, how you do all, all uh, think about all, all aspects of your business, the more you can be clear on who you're serving, the easier business will be for, for yourselves. Now, Roger, we, we've been really dipping our toe in the pool of content marketing as well. I know of uh, an accountant in in Australia who has built marketing content programs for like a book. And you've mentioned some of these books, podcasts, all sorts of other things. Like there's all sorts of content that being 
can be created, but this is really the, the, the pathway into all of that. And I think applies to, you know, a unique business and a unique person that wants to go that angle, but it can be very powerful. Do you have any examples that you'd like to share? In terms of bookkeepers or accounts? Yeah. Like have, what have you seen in terms of people taking it that next step where it's like, well, we're putting out a little bit of content and some blogs. What's, what have you seen uh, in terms of books or podcasts or, or anything like that in the industry? Well, this very podcast you're doing right now is an example of content marketing for sure. I mean, I know it's a lot of undertaking to, to, to set up a podcast and keep it going and you have to do it every week to build your audience. But what a great value added service you're providing to your clients, your customers, bookkeepers. I mean, that's a great example right there. I know you're talking with one of my, my friends and colleagues, Andrew Wall, uh, in the next couple of months. And he's an owner of a Toronto-based um, accounting and bookkeeping firm called Wall CPA. And he actually has won some awards across Canada for being uh, one of the top influential uh, bookkeeping and accounting firms in Canada. And he just dominates social media. He's got like tens of thousands of Twitter followers and LinkedIn, et cetera. But his platform is video. He loves to do videos, right? He provides video tips. So there's an example of someone kind of doubling down on a particular type of content. I think that's key as well. Just like you're doubling down on podcasts and spending a lot of your time and energy on that, and it's working out well for you. Andrew Wall and his firm are are focusing on videos and and social media. Other people I know might say, you know what? I'm not so good on video. Podcasts kind of scare me. I'm just going to focus on articles. Other people might want to do um, simple um, infographics or even things like online webinars. So there's lots of different options. And I think it's important to play to your strengths. Look, I know a bookkeeper, a small business owner doesn't have tons of resources to try all these different content marketing options, but pick one that you think is best for you and pick one that you know is going to resonate with your your target audience and maybe pick one that your competitors down the street aren't doing. So if uh, a firm down the road is is really big on, on videos, maybe you can start to dominate to really good thought leadership articles. Beautiful. You know, Roger, we could probably go on talking about this plus, 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 plus. I'm going to love to have you back to talk more about small business and marketing. And, you know, there's probably a whole host of things that we can, we can go into that are, are going to help our listener do better each day in their businesses. But before we, we say goodbye, tell, tell our listener a little bit about where they can find out more about you and as well, if they want to engage with you, what's the best way to do that? Absolutely. I think the best website to go to based on our talk today would be www.boxofbusinessblogs.com. That's the service I mentioned that provides a you know, weekly email with a fresh 500 word article on a business topic designed for small business readers. So it's perfect for bookkeepers and accountants and financial advisors. And it costs just $39 a month. And that gets you a blog a week. If you don't like a topic, you can send it back and we'll send you a replacement blog at no charge. So that's worth checking out. I love it. If I'd love it if your followers would follow me on Twitter too. My handle is at Roger Pierce. And of course, I'm also on LinkedIn under Roger Pierce. Please check me out anytime. Thank you so much. And of course, we'll have all of those links and contact pieces of information on the show notes so that you can go and start doing that. Roger, this has been a treat. Thank you so much for generously giving us your time and your expertise and sharing it with our listener. Thank you so much, Michael. It's been fun. Yes, and we'll definitely have you back very soon, I hope. You bet. Well, that wraps another episode of the Successful Bookkeeper podcast. To learn more about today's guest and to get access to all sorts of valuable free business building resources, you can go to thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Until next time, goodbye. You've been listening to The Successful Bookkeeper with Michael Palmer. For more information and to download the resources mentioned in this episode, please visit us at thesuccessfulbookkeeper.com. Thank you for listening.